hoping everyone can see my screen. Dark screen says Supercharger Scrum. Is that thumbs up? Yes? No? no looking good. Lovely. Uh, I, I, I have a habit of going through this stuff pretty quickly. Uh, and let me actually see if I can. Oh, perfect. You can't see the chat window. So that's great. Um, I, I'm just going to keep an eye on the chat as well. So please, please, please interrupt me at any point of time so we can talk through stuff. Uh, I was thinking about how I go through this and what, what, and even before everything else, I was like, I am in India. We're doing this in the India time zone. It behooves me to talk about cricket. And I had a whole cricket thing that I was going to run through. But then I was like, I saw the names popping up. I was like, this might not work if I talk about cricket. Not everyone's going to get this. But just, just, so, um, just so everyone's aware, uh, this is before we go into anything else. This is what's going on right now. India is playing Australia uh, in, a, in, in a test match. Day one was just done. Uh, this is this is the end of day one. Um, that's that that is what's going on right now. It's uh, Ahmad said yesterday was holy. Today is probably an even bigger day because the last last test match of the Border Gavaskar series started. So well, we, we we might come back to this later later on, but. Yeah, that's that, that's what's going on around here right now. That that's been the talk of the day for, for uh, here in India. Um, so yeah, uh, bef we, what what I really really want to talk about is, is is some of my experiences I've had in the past with uh, with working uh, working on 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 Scrum teams, and in particular, um, this this basic experience I had of of what I would like to call zombie scrum. Um, if you all, I, I don't know if you all are aware of what this thing is, the zombie scrum thing, but essentially we, we were definitely in this situation of, um, we were doing all the stuff that scrum tells us to do, but we weren't really seeing the progress. We weren't really doing as well as we thought we would with the with stuff, with, with scrum and agile and all that. This was a while ago. And we were doing all the stand-ups, we were doing all the retrospectives, all that fun stuff, but none of it really seemed to be working for us. As, uh, just, just to make this a little more interactive, has uh, any of you been in that kind of a kind of a rut with Scrum where you're trying to do everything right, but it isn't really moving forward? I see a couple of heads heads, heads nodding. Uh, feel free to just drop in drop in uh, in chat what what your what uh, what symptoms you've seen of 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 zombie scrum um i've definitely seen a few and i'll i'll go over those here in a bit but what what are the symptoms that you have seen of uh, of zombie scrum where you're trying to do everything but it isn't quite moving the way you expect it to i'm just going to watch the chat here for a little bit process over individuals absolutely yeah going through the motions brainlessly without understanding the why uh Teams just running through the motions. Absolutely, yep. All, all, all those things. And and yeah, feel, feel free to keep dropping the sense. Uh, focus only on the events. Yes, Feature Factory. All, all of those. Uh, um, doing Agile without being Agile. Yes, absolutely. And 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 I, I really I really like uh, uh, I I really like that. Uh, and a couple of you actually mentioned this already. Oh, Andrea. Hey, hi, Andrea from Bahamas. Another another country covered here. Uh, uh, ceremonies before rich become rituals, and focuses only on the events. And when we're doing the events, we're doing them kind of mindlessly, essentially like zombies. Um, that's that that's that's absolutely what what uh, what we saw. Oh, that's a great one. Ke Kevin just makes the point of fearful of pulling an item at the end of the sprint, fitting it into the box versus value of flow. Um, yeah. Where flow starts interfering with, or not interfering with, going ag against what the Scrum team thinks Scrum is. So yeah, we we had all of these things. We totally had all of these things. Uh, this was way back. I was I was in a I was a, in 2000, 2000, 2008, 2009. Uh, one of my well wasn't my first experience with Scrum, but early on, uh, we 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 were. I was a part of a team of zombies of Scrum. So we know these things. These are very similar to the things that you all just talked about. Um, which are, you know, our sprint retrospectives included, they had the same issues over and over again because, hey, we weren't really paying attention to this stuff. We were just doing this stuff. Our daily scrums were status meetings, as you all said, doing these mindlessly instead of instead of moving things through. 
uh, instead of being agile, having an uh, uh, instead of truly being agile, just following these things mindlessly. Um, our sprint reduce did not result in any change of any plans. And and finally, my my, my favorite thing was we, we we had carryover almost all the time, which might not be such a bad thing. But more importantly, the thing that you all are point, pointing out is the thing that should be the most important thing in in Scrum, which is the sprint goal, was kind of nowhere to be found. We were we were missing it as often as as we were hitting it. So all these things uh, were essentially the things that we had seen over and over again. It was exactly as as Marco is pointing out in in uh, in chat. It was it was a cargo cult. We had copy pasted practices from outside and just implementing them without understanding. Uh, this is where we were failing ourselves in a way. Um, we got, this was a, again on that time, huh? that time 2009 is when we got introduced to flow metrics. One of our, one of our VPs went to, uh, went to a conference and heard about Scrumbon, but more importantly, heard about flow metrics and, um, this is where uh, we we saw Kanban as an alternative, but before going there, what we did was let's let's try to add Scrum, these flow metrics to Scrum, and see how it goes. As you will see, I'll, I'll go through some of these things, and I, as as you see, uh, our conversations move from being more subjective to objective. And in fact, uh, we went from talking about status to talking about collaboration, I, I, actually getting together and trying to get things done. Um, this this really did did uh, help us come back to life as 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 a uh, um, as uh, as as a team. We 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 moved past that zombie stage and can kind of came came back to life. Look at these metrics and see what they're telling us. The four metrics of flow and and uh, I've already given you one, which is cycle time. Uh, I, I I see a few familiar names here, so I'm sure I can get the rest of them from you. Uh, what are the other three metrics of flow that I haven't mentioned yet? We could jump into chat with that or even unmute if you want. Throughput, absolutely, yeah, throughput. Whip, what else have we got? Work item age, yeah, absolutely. Um, th th those, those are our metrics. Uh, our metrics of flow, throughput, work item age, total whip, and and work item eight, yeah, I know. Uh, as Andrea mentions, for you, for a bunch of you, it's too early for Zoom bombers. Uh, it's uh, I've definitely had most of the day, so we're we're, we're good with that. Um, uh, yeah, Gabriel, your questions. Are we going to get the sides? I'll 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 send a PDF of these to. I'll, I can we can upload it to the to the to to the to the link in the in the Procanmon dot uh, org meetup. Perfect. All right, so yeah, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Um, we've got we've got these four metrics of flow, and this is this is where we uh, started going through and and applying these in in our in in our Scrum uh, pretty much on a daily basis. Remember, I talked about um, the, these are the, these are the issues we were seeing over and over again. Um, and in order to counter the to, to to counter these, really, what what we started was looking at these looking at these from the lens of flow metrics. What is it that we can do? to uh, handle these from, from the lens of flow metrics. Um, first one was retrospectives. This is where we're, we'll talk particularly about cycle time. Uh, our, our basic issue was that our retrospectives included the same issues repeatedly. Um, and I, I'm sure you, I don't know if you all have seen this with your retrospectives, it becomes pretty subjective. People come in with, oh, this is how I feel about things. These are the things that have been happening. Um, and then every couple of weeks you hear the same things again. I still feel this is still happening, all that fun stuff. Um, what we went to was using something like a like a cycle time scatter plot. And those of you who are not familiar with this, um, along along the 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 x axis there is is calendar time, and uh, on on the y axis is, is is cycle time. So every dot here represents an item that got done, and how long it took that item. To, to get done is the height of that of that dot. So imagine in your sprint, whether it's a weekly sprint, bi-weekly sprint, whatever it is, you collect how long it takes for things to get done. Very soon, you have a pretty good idea of how long is it taking for us to actually get things done. 
once you have that, we can actually go into a retrospective and talk about, hey, if this is our scatter plot, if this is how things have been getting done, what are some things that stand out? Are there certain items that took way too long to get done? Meanwhile, everything is getting done in, in 10 to 12 days. It looks like, for example, on this particular slide, that there is a dot way, way up there um, the, the, that took over 100 days. As, as Gunnar probably thought, what is this wave? What's happening in the middle here? Uh, what, what's, what's going on here? We can actually look at these and then have conversations around what happened there and how can we avoid this in the future? What are we learning from this objective data that's in front of us that we collected over the past sprint? And how can we use that to make improvements moving forward? As we make improvements, the shape of this data will change, the way things look will change, and then we'll probably see even new things emerging. Again, your retrospectives start going away from being these subjective conversations about how, how are things going to a very objective conversation of that thing is that thing happened. What are we as a team going to do to make sure that thing doesn't happen again? Or it looks like this sprint, we did things really well. What was it that we did that caused things to go really well? How can we repeat that pattern in the future? It becomes a lot more objective conversation as opposed to a subjective, how is everyone doing? And how do we think we did last sprint? It's more, how do we know we did last sprint? That, that was something that we pulled into our retrospective and we definitely saw a lot of improvement from that because frankly, we had just never visualized cycle time before. We had just been in this zombie scrum mode of just carrying stuff forward and, and moving, it, moving it through. This helps move forward quite a bit. Our daily scrums, uh, work item age is where we, we looked in for daily scrums. Daily, our daily scrums were essentially status meetings. People would show up and say, what did you do yesterday? What did I do today? What's in your way? Um, I am so happy that uh, the folks at the, the Scrum Guide folks have taken those questions out of the Scrum Guide because I think that that is that's one of the more, that's one of the anti patterns that was perpetuated by the Scrum Guide in the past, and people have def people took that as just another status meeting. If you ask me what I did yesterday and what I'm doing today, essentially I'm supposed to give you status. Um, this is where we again looked at these flow metrics and the, the we essentially went to the mo what we believe is the most important chart most people have never heard of, which is the work item aging chart. Um, quick anatomy of this, uh, it's, it's all, every stage of your process is represented here from when you go left to right, analysis active, done, dev active, dev done, testing and done. Obviously your process will look very different from, from, from this. Um, and the height of each dot now is how long that dot has been in process how long since we pulled it in. Once you're doing that, now we can again have a more objective conversation of what's causing things to take a long time and how do we as a team come together to, to help, help that thing move forward, help something that's taking a long time move forward. And that is where, again, we went from status to collaboration. Instead of doing daily scrums where we're giving status, we went to daily scrums where we are collaborating as a team um, to, to figure out how, how we move forward. Um, you can, this is, this is a screenshot from Actionable Agile that allows you to color code things. Again, that you don't need to use that tool. You could essentially do it as a, in Excel and, and, and color code things there. But that's, uh, that's what we moved to. It was more of a collaboration instead of us just st standing there. Uh, and what's, what's, what's great about this chart and what I love about this chart is you can literally, if you take care of this, if you take care of age on a basis, you literally don't have to worry about anything else. If you take care of things getting done, it's, it's active management of flow. And I believe many a time that goes missing from zombie scrum. When you're doing scrum, it does not, it says explicitly in the scrum guide that the, part, the point of daily scrum is to come up with a plan for the day, for the next 24 hours. And that is, uh, that is what this helps us do. Many a time when you're doing zombie scrum, it becomes individuals plan for the day rather than the team's plan for the day. Uh, something like aging helps you make it the team's plan for the day. Yeah, 
Uh, the only, yeah, you all are absolutely right. You've, you've definitely worked with this stuff, so you've seen the power of it. Uh, I'm going to speed through some of this in that case so that we can get to the more Q&A type stuff here soon. Uh, the last one, the last one I would try, try talk about is, is sprint planning. Uh, this is where we started using throughput. We had a lot of carryover in our teams, and uh, many times we would miss the sprint goal. In fact, if uh, uh, if uh, sorry, I, I'm just going to read Jagi's uh, comment here. Each of the dots represent a unit of work. The team itself will determine the size of the work item, so each item may not be the same size. Absolutely, the item will. There's, there's absolutely no compulsion for these items to be the same size. Uh, so we have uh, the, the whole issue of carryover. Again, I don't think necessarily carryover is a huge issue, but missing the sprint goal is definitely a big issue. That's what we were missing. If I were to ask you all, um, at least those of you who are not familiar with the stuff that I already talked about, uh, that these are the, these are our, this is our throughput for the last 10 sprints. Um, what do you, how many, how many PBIs, how many product backlog items would you, or would you plan for in the next sprint? If this was the throughput you saw for the last 10 sprints. You put your answers in chat or just speak them out. This can easily be a discussion. Insufficient information. Yeah, I, I would say that. How much of the variability is given control? Traditionally an average. Yeah. Uh, I, I, four. Four is a great answer. I love that answer. Uh, <laughs> four is a great answer. Eight. Yeah, uh, Marco. So yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to combine Jagger and, 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 and Marco's answer um, and, and kind of go with, yeah, eight. If you, if you, if you took this, dropped it into a spreadsheet or wherever, you will probably get eight as the, as the average answer. And that's what usually people do when they go into sprint planning, they'll take an average and we can spend ha ha half an hour or an hour uh, talking about average. Yeah, webov has got, uh, when you plan on average, <laughs> you tie an average. Yeah, it, it's uh, how likely, all those are the perfect questions. And obviously you all have a decent idea of what I'm talking about here. What's interesting for me though is the average of this is eight. Uh, if you, even if you look back, the data from which you got the average, uh, one, eight never shows up even once in that data. And two, you only did better than that average four times. And that's from the data you used to come up with that average. So really things are a lot worse. You all were talking about all the right things. You were talking about uh, the, the, the variability in the system uh, there's not enough information here. Uh, absolutely, all those things are the right things, and yeah, it's it's uh, you can see that it that average has itself been wrong more often than not in the past. And obviously, some of you have already an idea of where I'm going with this. Uh, but before I go there, this is what we really want. We want a technique that gives us a better than average chance of success. Someone already mentioned uh, the flaw of averages. Highly, highly recommend that book. Uh, flaw of averages, the summary is the plans based on average fail on average. We want to do better than average. And more than that, what we really want is an idea of risk. How much risk is inherent in the answer that we're giving people? If we're saying eight, what is the amount of risk we're putting in eight? If we're doing, if we're saying 10, what is the amount of risk there? Um, and this is exactly where I will go back to our, our, our topic of the day. Uh, right at the bottom of the screenshot, you'll see, this is actually, if you put in Google India versus Australia uh, and click on that, this is what will come up. Right at the bottom of this, you see the percentage chances of India winning, the percentage of this game being a draw. By the way, those of you not familiar with cricket, we play for five days and we can still get a draw. Uh, that's just a thing. Uh, and the the percentage chance of Australia winning is 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 thirty six percent. There, this is what is called a probabilistic forecast. Uh, what they are doing is trying to figure out uh, what are the probabilities of each outcome happening. That's similar to what we want to figure out. We have probably not just three. We have multiple outcomes that are possible in the future. Could be eight, could be 10, could be 15. We could do any of that number of items in a sprint based on our past performance. We have we have figured out how 
likely is each of those outcomes. Um, the way, by the way, if, 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 you, if you all are interested in this, as the game progresses, you can just type India versus Australia in, in, uh, in, your, in Google and go and look at that live win probability indicator. It shifts as, as events happen in the day. So as they get more data, they reforecast, and the way they do this is similar to the way a lot of uh, a lot of various forecasting works. Uh, for those of you in the U.S., your 401k plans are forecasted just this way. Your your any of your financial advisors will forecast your retirement income using this same uh, this same method. And this method is what's called Monte Carlo simulations. This is where we use past data to simulate the future thousands of times. We obviously don't have enough time to go into the details of Monte Carlo simulations. Uh, for that, uh, obviously, you, we'll have to spend a little more time together, which would probably have to be in the shape of a class. Uh, but, or you can just watch Drunk Agile. You'll see a lot of stuff there. Um, but essentially, what we're trying to do is run these simulations over and over again. In this case, again, screenshot from Actionable Agile about 10,000 times to see how many things can we get done in the next 14 days. Uh, for example, in this particular in this particular example, it says that we have an eighty five percent chance because eighty five percent of our all all of, all of our simulations of the future resulted in twenty three items or more. Now we've got we've got a better conversation we can have. We can have the conversation of how much risk are we willing to take? Are we willing? To, uh, do we want a a fifty percent risk? That seems to be thirty two items or more. I can I have a fifty percent confidence I can get you thirty two or more items. I have a 70% confidence I can give you 27 or more and an 85% confidence of 23 or more. Now we've swift shifted the conversation from this is this is how much we can get done to how much risk are we willing to take? How much how, how much probability of being wrong are we willing to take on? And as you can see, the lower that number, the higher the probability of us being right. Uh, this this was a huge shift for us and we actually went way way into the Monte Carlo stuff to kind of do it continuously. After every day, we would reforecast to see where we are and what's what's the likelihood of things getting going wrong now, so th which is what exactly uh, that wind predictor from, from, from Google does for any game that's in progress. Um, I'm going to try to quickly, I'm going to move that forward. Uh, I'm going to try to quickly sum this stuff up so we can move on to any questions you all might have. Just a quick reminder, this is the thing that uh, tripped us up initially and trips most people up. These are flow metrics, not Kanban metrics. Uh, there is a misconception out there that you can only use these metrics if you are doing Kanban, which is absolutely not true. Um, if your these exist in your system and for your team, doesn't matter what process your team is following, as your system has a start point and an end point, if you start work and you finish work, these things, these metrics exist. And that, uh, that, that for me was a crucial point. If these metrics exist anyway, why not leverage them? And if they're giving you this good information to move away from the zombie scrum mode to actually have more focused and more objective conversations, why not leverage them? That's exactly what what I uh, what I would recommend folks do. Now, again, I've talked about this from that zombie scrum perspective. It's not just the zombie scrum. Regardless of how you're implementing right now, even if you're doing well, these will only move you forward. And it sounds like a bunch of you are already using this stuff. Once if you're talking about Monte Carlo forecasting, and also, but if you are looking to take your Agile slash Scrum implementation to the next level. These flow metrics, in my opinion, are the key, key, key to that. Understanding how items flow through your system, how WIP, age, all those things interplay with each other. That is absolutely key to take things to the next level. Um, uh, for more information on this stuff, absolutely go over to prokanban.org. Uh, go to the uh, under under training under the training menu item. You'll find applying flow metrics for Scrum. Uh, there's a flow metrics for Scrum ebook which uh, uh, which Will Seeley and Dan Vacanti wrote. Uh, Ahmad just po uh, just posted that in there too. 
Um, there are already classes listed for this. Or there are already public classes listed for Flow Metrics for Scrum. I have one coming up on March 21st. Uh, if oh, Go back there. March 21st, if you all are interested for that, it's public public class as well. If you're interested in private classes, you can reach out to any of the trainers in at prokanban.org that are certified to this. So if you go under the trainers list, you'll be able to find them there as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I would love to see you in one of my classes. So reach out if you're interested in that. Uh, and again, these, these trainers, all of us provide pr private classes as well. Finally, uh, thank you for all of you who attended and did not try to actively Zoom bomb uh, this session. Uh, <laughs> that was that, as again, we're nothing if not agile here. We, we, we sidestepped that nicely enough. Uh, and yeah, no, 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 no presentation from me will be complete without a picture of Nisha. So there's Nisha for everyone who was missing her. Um, and I think that is pretty much it. I'm going to